present in the operating room during surgery, and when she was certain she had done all she could, she took the injured dogs home. Even with Susan out of the race, 1985 was to be the woman's year of the Iditarod after all, in the person of Libby Riddles of Teller. Libby had not received the amount of publicity that Susan had over the years, but she was an experienced musher, entering her first Iditarod in 1980. Her upset victory came from a bold and daring move. She and the other leading mushers were caught in a storm at Shaktulik, a ground blizzard with winds gusting to 50 miles an hour. Libby set out into the teeth of the storm while the other mushers waited it out. That daring gamble paid off and her lead was established for the rest of the race. I made an agreement, with, an agreement with myself before I left that if I take off, I wasn't going to come back, even if it's crummy. She got a jump on us early the next morning, apparently. That's when we were drinking her coffee and looking at the weather and checking the, the ham radio reports when we should have been booting up the dogs and, you know, getting on down the road. That was a good move that she made leaving there. Um, I thought it was a little foolish and she didn't get too far out of Shack Tulik last night. But she she was able to head out the trail early this morning. This morning Shack Tulik looked really bum. From Shack Tulik on, Libby held tenaciously to the lead her gamble had given. She arrived triumphantly in Nome as the first woman ever to win the Iditarod. Libby winning, especially at the time frame that she won, which was only two weeks after the moose thing had happened, and when um, I still had many of the live dogs that had lived through it, they were still at the vets, I was still concerned, were they all going to pull through? I was in deep mourning, and um, yes, it was insult to injury of sorts, but um, it's the lesser of the, of the um, problems that uh, occurred that year. And, um, you know, I was happy for Libby, and really her win had nothing to do with me. While Susan regretted being put out of the race, that regret paled beside the intense emotional grief from the loss and mutilation of her dogs. She had raised Hyde and Johnny, the two dogs killed, from birth. And the 13 others, battered and torn by the moose's hammering hooves, were also her children, her family, her friends. She had cuddled them, fed them, walked them, and run them all for thousands of hours. She did not have the luxury of time for grieving. The other dogs still needed attention. She returned to the kennel, and the rhythm of life went on, as it always will. If hard work is the cure for sorrow, then Susan's everyday life has that in plenty. She takes care of over 160 dogs, including 60 puppies. I raise them and start working with them from literally the day they're born. We pick them up about once a day, usually um, petting them, blowing on their faces so they get used to actually human smell and everything and they know that you're a nice person. By the time they're three weeks old then, usually um, we start feeding them and they'll actually, they can crawl around so you can start playing with them a little bit. Part of what makes a winning musher as opposed to someone who only comes in 20th or 40th is definitely the person's ability to relate to the dogs. old 